All right, I'm going to approach the Hall sensor with the south pole of a magnet. And you notice the LED will turn on. If I approach it with the north pole of the magnet, nothing happens. We have already discussed the basic concepts of a Hall element, which is a semiconductor plate of some kind that has a constant current source, current flowing through it, apply a magnetic field, and we create a transverse voltage on the side proportional to the polarity and intensity of the magnetic field. I already discussed this demonstration and illustration circuit where you have a constant current source, a Hall plate, a differential amplifier, and you're going to set the quiescent output to be one half of VCC. Note that in my units I'm using 12 volts and not 5. And so when I adjust V set, my quiescent output is going to be uh, 6 volts. Alright, in this case all of that equivalent circuit that you saw on the previous slide goes into this one small three pin package. This is a drawing of it up here. It has a, a positive, a negative, and an out. I'm using the TL173 and as I mentioned I'm using uh, 12 volts and not 5. This thing will operate from 4.5 to 24 volts. Now we're going to move up and discuss how the operation of a Hall switch and a Hall latch. And it all depends on a Schmidt trigger and I'm going to use an LM311 comparator to demonstrate how this works. Alright, we're looking at the diagram to an Allegro A3141 Hall switch. What have we got here? Well, as I mentioned before, we have some kind of voltage regulation or current regulation. We have our Hall plate, we have a differential amp, but now we have added a Schmidt trigger circuit and from the Schmidt trigger is an open collector output transistor or it could be a MOSFET. In its simplest form, the Schmidt trigger and the open collector transistor make this at this point, this is considered a digital component and no longer really analog. It switches on or off depending on the set point in the Schmidt trigger. This is the package for this particular device. Let's look somewhat closer. How would you hook this up? How would I connect such a device? Well, look over here on the left at circuit A. Here's 12 volts to VCC, but I've also connected the out, at the out to an LED through a 1K resistor. When I approach the hall face with the south pole of a magnet, the LED will remain off until the certain until the such until uh, so much magnetic flux switches it on, it switches to ground, the LED lights up. Another way to do it, you can always use a pull-up resistor, and the nice part about these open collector output hall sensors is I can use a different voltage on the pull-up volts, up to 24 volts, than the VCC that powers the device. So I can operate mine at 12 volts, but you can connect this to 3.5 or 5 volts and the output goes directly to an Arduino or whatever you're using, Raspberry Pi, whatever. Another way to hook it up, because these things, this output transistor is only good for about 20 milliamps. As shown here, we could always use a PNP driver transistor bring your magnet to the face, it switches on. 
it creates a current IB. This is an emitter base current through Q1, and then it creates a collector current to ground through your motor or whatever load you're running. All right, briefly, let's look at the LM311 comparator and how it connects. This is an 8-pin device. You can use other ones, such as the LM339, or you can make a comparator out of a 741 or LM358 op amps, whatever you want to. What makes this easy is the output is both open emitter and open collector. If we look at this illustration right here, I'll go ahead and ground the emitter and I use a pull-up resistor on the collector. When the voltage on the pin 3 negative input exceeds the voltage on pin 2, the output transistor will switch to ground and the output will go low. An alternative connection would be here. You could tie the collector back to VCC and connect a resistor from pin 1 to ground. When the transistor switches on, the output will go high. I employed this version over here with the pull-up resistor. Alright, this is part of the circuit that I had at the beginning of the video. This is an analog or ratiometric Hall sensor, it puts out an analog voltage from 0 to, in my case, I was using 12 volts to nearly 12 volts depending on magnet, magnet strength and polarity. And I had used a potentiometer connected back to VCC to create a reference voltage VREF. If we measure the voltage at test point 1, V out is going to be 6 volts with no magnetic flux input. And if I set V ref, for example, to 7 volts, well, pin 3 will be lower than pin 2, the positive input. Thus, the internal transistor will be switched off. The LED will be turned off. As I approach the Hall sensor's face with the south pole of the magnet, as you saw, V out, the voltage on test point 1 will increase. When it reaches 7 volts or a little bit above, it will be greater than V reference. The internal transistor will switch on. This creates a path to ground, lights up the LED through pin 1, which would have been the transistor emitter. If I turn the magnet around and came at the sensor face from the North Pole, nothing happens because I go from s below 6 volts, which of course is going to be under 7 volts on test point 2. One thing we need to note before we leave this slide, what happens if V out test point 1 equals V ref on test point 2? That's an illegal and problematic condition it will, the LED will try to switch off and on, off and on, off and on. It's completely useless at that point. So we're going to want to add hysteresis to the comparator circuit. All right, this is the circuit that you actually saw operating at the beginning of the video. I have a ratiometric Hall effect sensor back here. The output is sent to the negative input of the LM311 comparator. And my reference is made up by this voltage divider of an 8.2K resistor with a 10K resistor. And that's connected to pin 2. The output, remember when this, when voltage on pin 3 exceeds the voltage on pin 2, what does this do? Pin 7 will go low. But what I did is I connected it through a inverter and a resistor to light up an LED. So when this goes low, this will output a high and turn on my LED. This again, of course, is the sensor that I'm using. It's a TL173 and I'm operating at 12 volts. 
but now I've done something different. I've added this additional resistor R4 from the output back to V reference. What does that do for me? It creates what is called hysteresis. This gives me a different turn on point that's going to be different from a turn off point. Let me explain how this is going to work and then I'll show you how to calculate the resistor. Oh, this, uh, by the way, this very same circuit, depending on the value of R4, can be a switch or a latch. But first, let's look at it as a switch. All right, let's discuss some more terminology that you're going to find in the Hall Sensor Spec Sheets and on the web page that I made to cover this. You have something called B operate. This is the magnetic operating point. It defines when the output driver will be active or on. BRP or B release point is the magnetic release point. It defines when the output driver will be inactive or off. Hysteresis is the difference between B operate and B release point. It is basically hysteresis equals B op minus BRP. Let's look over here, since we're only concerned in this video with a switch, let's look at figure A. Output state, this line right here represents um, the quiescent output of 6 volts. All right, It represents an output of 6 volts. Let's argue that this here is 8 volts, just for argument's sake. Uh, and, and this is when the comparator circuit will switch on is at this point here. And so as long as I'm above eight, point, uh, 8 volts all the way up to VCC, I, they sw it will remain on. But what happens if I draw, and that's my v, v reference in this example case. V reference is 8 volts. As long as it's greater than 8 volts or whatever V reference is, the LED stays on. But when I come back to 8 volts, it does not switch off. In fact, I can drop below 8 volts because I have set the release point below the turn on point. It will have to drop to a lower voltage before it switches off. In the example that I had, I measured a B operating point here of 6.82 volts and my release point here was 6.32 volts so my hysteresis BOP minus BRP is 0 0.5 volts. Alright, let's refer back to this complete circuit. Now I'm going to go and look at just how these resistors react and I'm going to remove all these other components out of the circuit and let's do a little bit of resistance calculations. Alright, let's look at the drawing again. Here's the whole circuit drawn at the bottom, but I've removed the hall sensor, the comparator, the output driver, all of the stuff and reduce this down to simply resistor networks. In the upper left corner I have a 3.3K in series with a 100K which is in parallel with an 8.2K and that combination is in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. Let's redraw this. We have an 8.2K resistor in parallel with a 103.3K resistor whose combination is in still in series with the 10K resistor. When we work out the parallel resistance formulas, these the 8.2K, 3.3K, and 100K come out to 7,600 ohms which is in series with a 10 kilo ohm resistor. So we will add 7.6K to 10K 
that gives me 17.6 uh, K divided into my 12 volt source. The current will be 0 0.682 milliamps times 10,000 ohms. My reference voltage is 6.82 volts. Now let's switch on the comparator and this more or less removes we end up with this combination because at that point it will remove the 100k and 3.3k from the equation so we still have our 8.2k but now we have the parallel combination of 10k and 100k do your parallel resistance formula you have 8.2k in series with a 9.1k add those together divide into 12 volts and I get 0 0.694 milliamps times 9.1k gives me 6.32 volts so hysteresis that's B operate which in this case is 6.82 minus B release point which is 6.32 gives me a hysteresis of 0 0.5 volts. Alright, we're right back to this circuit here again. And you saw how we took a ratiometric Hall sensor, added a type of Smith trigger, calculated up what we want, where the uh, operate and release points were, and we had an open collector output transistor through the comparator and so forth. This exact same circuit we just talked about a switch. Most Hall sensors out there tend to be latches. Latches are somewhat different than switches and it's all changes in this Smith trigger and that's going to be the subject for our next video how to build a Hall effect latch. Thanks for listening. Please uh, hit a thumbs up if you would and visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. The link to this material so you can read over it cl more closely is in the description. Thanks for listening.